Um, hopefully you're familiar with Emanuel Velikovsky and his work. I've been trying to find a copy of Worlds in Collision, but it's, it's impossible. They've made it impossible to find that. But there is a lot of information on this Emanuel Velikovsky archive. I'll put the link down below to it. You can see you can do a Google search on the site for whatever you're looking for, or, you know, they break it down into sections and then from there it's broken down even further like I said there's a ton of stuff his original writings correspondence with different people you know papers there's full transcripts of lectures um, and then on an unpublished uh, work I think bonds of the past I guess a film uh, about him a um, lot, lot of information I'm just gonna go over one thing here um, the earth without the moon there's a lot of talk in you know, Thunderbolts and the electric uh, community about Mars and Venus, and I feel like the moon gets left out. You know, it's the ratio-wise, it's, you know, the Earth-Moon system. Like, it's so big compared to the size of Earth, it really is a companion. You know, we're a dual planet system almost here, it's just... And it, it gets left out, and then you get like the uh, people who talk about Saturn, the Sun, and the Moon. And the Moon has its own connotations that way, and it's important to realize that the Moon wasn't always here. It wasn't always with us. And this side, you can see the references there, you know, the numbers in blue. Um, you can click on and actually get to the original text where this stuff is mentioned. And a lot of this comes from ancient Greece because that's some of the oldest writings that we have left. And I'll just read a little bit of this. Um, the Arcadians are said to have possessed their land before the birth of Jove, which is Jupiter. So before Jupiter became prominent in our skies. And the folk is older than the moon. Uh, Hippolytus refers to the legend that Arcadia brought forth Pelagius of greater antiquity than the moon. Lucian in his astrology says that the Arcadians affirm in their folly, so Lucian's an idiot, that they are older than the moon. I love how he's telling them that they're... Ugh, people drive me nuts. Sensorianus also alludes to the time in the past when there was no moon in the sky. Some allusions to the time before there was a moon may also be found in the scriptures. In Job 25.5 the grandeur of the Lord, who makes peace in the heights, is praised, and the time is mentioned before the moon, before a moon, and it did not shine. And in Psalm 72:5 it said, "Thou wast feared since the sun and before the moon, a generation of generations." The memory of a world without a moon lives in oral traditions among the Indians. The Indians of Bogota highlight highlands in the eastern cordilleras of Colombia relate some of their tribal reminiscences to a time before there was a moon. In the earliest times when the moon was not yet in the heavens, says the tribesmen of Chipchas. There are currently three theories of the origin of the moon. This was written back in the 70s, I believe. The moon originated at the same time as the earth, being formed substantially from the same material, aggregating and solidifying. The moon was formed not in the vicinity of the earth, but in a different part of the solar system, and was later captured by the Earth. The moon was originally a portion of the terrestrial crust, and was torn out, leaving behind the bed of the Pacific. The theory that they're going with now, that mainstream science projects, is that a Mars-sized body collided with the Earth, and the remnants coalesced into the current moon. And that's as absurd as number one is. And I say that because... The moon originating the same time as the Earth, being formed from the same material, aggregating and solidifying, and something hitting the Earth, throwing all the particles out into space, and then those aggregating and solidifying. That's never been proven. It's a theory that, that NASA proposes, or mainstream science proposes. It doesn't actually happen. It, it's proven to actually not happen. Once you reach a certain size, any further collisions will then destabilize it and break it back down. You can't actually aggregate something to the size required. 
All three theories claim the presence of the moon on an orbit around the Earth for billions of years. Mythology may supply each of these views with some support. Genesis 1 for the first view, the birth of Aphrodite from the sea for the third view, Aphrodite's origin and the disruption of Uranus, and also the violence of sin, the Babylonian moon, seems to support the second view. Since mankind on both sides of the Atlantic preserved the memory of a time when Earth was without the moon, the first hypothesis, namely of the moon originating simultaneously with the Earth in its vicinity, is to be excluded, leaving the other two hypotheses to compete between themselves. Since we have seen that the traditions of diverse peoples offer corroborative testimony to the effect that in a very early age, but still in the memory of mankind, no moon accompanied the Earth. Since human beings already peopled the Earth, it is improbable that the moon sprang from it. There must have existed a solid lithosphere, not a liquid Earth. Thus, while I do not claim to know the origin of the moon, I find it more probable that the moon was captured by the Earth. Such an event would have occurred as a catastrophe. If the moon's formation took place away from the Earth, its composition may be quite different. There is no evidence to suggest whether the moon was a planet, a satellite of another planet, or a comet at the time of its capture by the Earth. Whatever atmosphere it may have had was pulled away by the Earth at, by another contacting body or dissipated in some other way. Since the time the moon began to accompany the Earth, it underwent the influence of contacts with comets and planets that passed near the Earth in subsequent ages. The mass of the moon being less than that of the Earth, the moon must have suffered great disturbances in cosmic contacts. During these contacts, the moon was not carried away. This is due to the fact that no body more powerful than the Earth came sufficiently close to the moon to take it away from the Earth for good. But in the contacts that took place, the moon was removed repeatedly from one orbit to another. The variations... <laughs> These chickens are going crazy. It's driving me nuts. The variations in the position of the moon can be read in the variations in the length of the month. The length of the month repeatedly changed in subsequent catastrophic events, and for this there exists a large amount of supporting evidence. In these later occurrences, the moon played a passive role, and Zeus in the Iliad advised Aphrodite to stay out of the battle in which Athene and Ares, Venus and Mars, were the main contestants. And so that battle that they're referring to is what the Thunderbolts project in uh, Symbols of an Alien Sky are often referring to. And then here are the, I'll just quickly show the references here listed. So according to what this article says, there was a time before the moon when peoples inhabited the earth, before Jupiter, and then in later years once the moon was captured and part of the earth, that's when the battle between Venus, Mars, and supposedly Saturn took place. Um, so you can see that the moon was around for that. Um, if you watch Symbols of an Alien Sky and, and follow, you know, things like that, they never, never really mention the moon, but it would appear, according to Velikovsky, that the moon was here for that, uh, during that time, which I've always kind of wondered about. But if you go to velikovsky.org, or varchive.org, and so there's a ton of information. I'm going to delve a little deeper, find some more interesting things, and maybe put up those stories as well.